Here we're going to be looking at debt restructuring by the modification of terms of a loan. And we're going to look at the continuation here of debt with a new effective interest rate. And for example here, Corporation A owes Bank B here a 7-year 10% note in the amount of $660,000. Plus there's $66,000 of accrued interest here on this note. Now the note here is due here on 12-31-20-X1. That's the current date here. And Corporation A is in financial trouble. So Bank B agrees to restructure the loan here and they're going to forgive the accrued interest here of $66,000 that Corp A owes them and that was what we had up here, $66,000 worth of of accrued interest and they're going to reduce here the principal by $60,000. So currently uh, Corporation A owes $660,000 on the principal up here but it's going to be reduced down to $600,000. So that's what Corporation A is going to have to pay back in, pr in the principal amount here. And then three, what's going to, they're going to extend the maturity date here to 1231-20-X4. It's currently due here at 1231-20-X1, but it's going to be extended, extended three years here to 1231-20-X4. But the interest is going to stay the same here on this note, uh, 10%, but it's going to be based on the revised principal amount uh, that we, it's reduced here to $600,000. And the interest is going to be due here at 1231 at the end of each year here. So let's first look at Corp A, the debtor here on this loan or this notes payable. And this is where we're going to come up with this new effective interest rate that has to be calculated here. And that's based on Corp A to debtor here. So what we're going to do here, uh, let's first start out with our carrying amount of debt at the date here of restructure. Now remember, that would be the $660,000 worth of principal that's owed plus the $66,000 worth of accrued interest here. So that would be our carrying amount here at the restructuring date here, $726,000. So if we move down to our amortization schedule, our beginning carrying value or the present value here uh, on that note here is $726,000 here. That's at the data restructure here. But what we have to do is we have to come up with a new amortization schedule. And this is where this new effective interest rate comes into play. And we're going to look at how we calculate that. So what we do know about this uh, note here, well, the interest rate is going to stay the same here, a 10% interest rate. And that's going to be based on that new revised principal due here of $600,000. So what we're going to have here, uh, the payment amount we're going to have three payments that have to be paid at the 10% or $60,000 here per year here on this interest payment. 10% times the $600,000 principal amount here in that loan. So the total payments, we're going to have three payments of $60,000 for $180,000. Those would be the cash payments owed to Bank B here. Now, this is where we have to calculate our new effective interest here for this amortization. So what I do is I just take the uh, financial calculator here and what you would do here, you put in the number of years here that we're looking at, three years here, and we have to determine the interest rate, that new effective interest rate. So we take our present value, that's the $726,000 here, that's the carrying amount of our debt, and then we put in our payments here, That's you have to put these in a negative amount here. This present value say it's positive amount your payments those are the interest payments of sixty thousand dollars per year here and then the future value or uh, th what they're going to have to pay out here is that six hundred thousand dollars put that into your calculator future value six hundred negative six hundred thousand present value sixty thousand dollar our payments excuse me sixty thousand here and you got the present value here your carrying value here and then just hit the interest button here and you're going to come with the new effective interest rate here at 2.6289 percent. So that's effectively what uh, Corporation uh, A here is going to be paying Bank B in interest here. So just for our amortization we'll just go through it quickly here. Beginning balance start out with that here. Take that times your effective interest rate and you're going to get the interest expense for the period here. So uh, our cash payment here was $60,000 based on that the stated rate interest on that note. Now our effective rate here base, uh, we calculate out to be $19,085 here for the first year here. So the difference between the cash payment, the effective interest, gives us the amount that we have to amortize this note's payable down to. So the difference here would be $40,915. 
and then if you take that amortized amount here, subtract that here from your beginning balance, you're going to come up with your new carrying value here of $685,085. And just continue on here, taking that beginning, your new carrying value times your effective interest rate, come up with your new interest expense here for, for the period, subtract that from your cash payment, that gives your amortized amount. So what we've done here we started out with the $726,000. That's the carrying value here, the note. We're going to amort we amortize it down here to $600,000. That's the uh, uh, maturity value here. That's what we're going to have to pay here, Bank B, at the end of the uh, third year here. And we would have amortized it down here by each that amount each year for a total of $126,000 worth. The note would be amortized here. That amount each year here, you can see that here. $726,000 down to $600,000. The difference here is $126,000 amount here that we amortize our notes receivable or notes payable, excuse me. Now the interest expense here, the actual interest expense that they would be um, having on their income statement here would be that total amount here of $54,000. That would be the interest expense on the income statement and then our actual cash payment here is $180,000. So the difference between our cash payment here and the interest expense equals the amount that we amortize this notes payable. Now we have to note here that the total future cash flows after restructuring here. That was that $600,000 worth of principal that has to be paid plus the $180,000 worth of interest here. That total amount here gives us $780,000. So this is how we calculate any gain or loss here by the uh, Corporation A here, the debtor. So the you look at the total future cash flows after restructuring, $780,000. Now in this case we're going to have no gain here because the future cash flows of $780,000 here is greater than the carrying value here of $726,000. So um, um, Corporation A here, the debtor would have no gain. All right, so we've taken um, We've taken care of Corporation A, the debtor here. Now let's go and look at um, Bank B, the creditor here, and how they would deal with this restructured loan here, this note. So again, carrying amount of the debt at the date of restructuring, that's the same here. Six, six, 660 principal, six, $66,000 worth of accrued interest on it, so $726,000. Same as the debtor, same carrying value here. So Bank B, the creditor here, is going to look at a loss here in restructuring this debt or this note's receivable. And what they're going to do is going to be the principal is going to be reduced here from $660,000 down to $600,000. But the interest rate is going to remain the same here at 10%. But regardless of what the interest rate is, they still have to go and use the historical interest rate here when they're... Uh, determining the, or we're going to look at it, the present value. So the interest payments, okay, the restructured interest payments, that's that new principal amount here, 600,000 times that 10% interest rate. Again, the interest payments are the same here. $60,000, that's what they're going to receive here from uh, Corporation A. Same as what Corporation A was paying. But now we're going to be using, the, we have to use the historical interest rate, same 10% here. That's the same as the stated rate here, uh, the new uh, stated rate here in a note. And you'll see where that comes into play here. So we're going to be using, the, again, historical interest rate to determine the present value of the note. And again, we'll look at that. That's the same. It hadn't changed here, but it, you're going to you're going to be using an historical amount here. So the, what we do here to determine any, in this case, it's going to be the loss here in the restructuring. And you'd have to do the same if there was a gain on any restructuring or anything like that. But here is where you're going to, this present value is going to come into play here instead of determining the effective interest rate, because that's going to actually be the same here. So we're going to look at from the Creditor's perspective here, you use the pre-structured carrying amount here. That's that $726,000. That, that was our carrying amount here that we have. Now we have to take the present value of their restructured cash flow. So we take the present value of that $600,000 here that it's due at 10% here. So discounting that back here at three per, for three years, principal amount here at 10%. We're going to... 
principal here is worth uh, amount is present value is four hundred fifty thousand seven hundred eighty nine dollars here again discounted at the historical rate here ten percent now we have to look at the present value of those interest payments that are going to be received here those are the sixty thousand dollar payments at ten percent discount those back here present value in, in this case remember just use your financial calculator or in this case I'm using the Excel function here but the present value of those sixty thousand dollar payments over three years here at ten percent they're currently their present value here is $149,211. So what you have to do is just sum your present value here of your principal amount here and the present value of those payments and you, it's going to come up to $600,000. The present value of these the cash flow here. And okay so that is only because the historical rate that's based on our historical rate here and our so what we would do is we take the present value our present value here of the payments plus the interest here and compare that to pre-structured carrying amount and you can see that it's less here so there's going to be a loss here of a hundred and twenty six thousand dollars simply the seven hundred twenty six thousand less the six hundred thousand here present value of these cash flows here and so that's going to be a loss here in restructuring $126,000 and that's going to be recorded here as a bad debt expense here by bank B here. Again now for the um, uh, amortization here now you'll see where this historical rate here which is the effective interest rate in this case we use the historical rate is the same here as the payment amount here that 10 percent interest payment so uh, you're going to see here we're going to have a zero amount here of amortization and we'll look at it in this fashion so we start out with our carrying amount here six hundred thousand dollars now remember that's the you always you determine the present value here of your cash flows the payments here plus that interest it comes up with six hundred thousand dollars now you can see at maturity here it we're going to receive six hundred thousand here from corporation a bank b is going to receive that here so you can see there's no difference here between the beginning balance here and the balance here when it's due here in three years here so let's just look at the, our amortization here so we got those payments here that we're going to receive ten percent interest rate times six hundred thousand uh, dollars principal amount here sixty thousand dollars three payments of sixty thousand dollars for a total of hundred eighty thousand dollars that's the cash received cash receipt here from corporate bank B receives from corporation A and now um, our effective interest well that's the same here we use that 10 percent interest rate here and that would be 10 percent times the beginning and the balance here six hundred thousand gives us a effective interest payment here uh, interest amount here of sixty thousand so there's no difference between the cash and the effective interest here so the amortized amount here is zero and you would you can see that here so you balance the uh, carrying value that's the present value here six hundred thousand it's the same here as the receipt or the future value so you would have zero amortization here of your notes receivable and then and you can see that in maturity here at six hundred thousand dollars same as the carrying uh, the present value here the carrying value that we started with here so okay so you can see here our total interest here a revenue that would be on our income statement is one hundred eighty thousand dollars. That matches matches our cash cash receipts here of one hundred eighty thousand dollars. And so there's as far as our amortization here of our notes receivable zero amount not not required here. Okay, so you can see here Bank B realizes interest revenue based on the historical or the in original interest rate here of ten percent. Okay, so this is what we've done here, looking at it from both uh, Corporation A, the debtor here in bank B the creditor here so the difference was and let's just go over it here we'll just look at bank B here now remember corporation A they had to the debtor here they had to come up with a new effective interest rate based on again that seven hundred and twenty six thousand dollar beginning carrying value here but then they had to come up with the effective rate here and that was difference different here they didn't discount the seven hundred and twenty six thousand dollars back using historical rate or the present value here uh, of ten percent the uh, corporate um, bank B has to discount the seven hundred twenty six thousand dollars back uh, to determine its present value here at the 
when it, and on restructuring when it was restructured here. So you can see uh, uh, Bank B here came up with this loss here in restructuring, whereas Corporation A, the debtor, uh, there was no gain because the future cash flows were greater than the um, carrying value of the debt here. Okay, so that takes care of both Corporation A here and Corporation uh, and Bank B here when it comes to uh, debt restructuring here when we're looking at the continuation of debt here and we had to determine a new effective interest rate and that really only affected Corporation A, the debtor here, and a Bank B, the creditor. They just used the uh, historical amount here of interest and uh, rate here. And that had just happened to be in this case the same as the uh, interest uh, the restructured interest rate and historical rate or the current rate were the same. So this is how we come up and we determine both uh, Corporation A to debtor here and Bank B the creditor here on recognizing the um, this new uh, debt restructuring on a modification of our terms of our loan.